We can use De Moivre's theorem to prove trig identities. It says use application of De Moivre's theorem to prove the following trig identities. We've got sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. We looked at this um, when we did our core maths and we would have done this as follows. We would have written this as sine 2 theta plus theta and use the trig addition formula. So I'm just going to use that now and we'll just quickly expand this out. This part you don't need to, to know as such but it'll give you a quick sort of recap on how we did this before. So what we did here, we wrote it as sine 2 theta cos theta plus cos 2 theta sine theta and we went about if we wanted this all in terms of sine we made everything sine so we wrote sine 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta multiplied it now by the cos theta and then we added and we wrote cos 2 theta as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and then multiply that by sine theta Cos squared theta, we now wrote as 2 sine theta, and we wrote it as 1 minus sine squared theta. Then we expanded this out, and we wrote this as sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. We then expanded this one out, and we said 2 sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. We added it all up, and as you can see, we've got exactly what we were asked to find. We end up with 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. Now that's all well and good. Um, the problem comes if I now put up something completely different and it gets huge. Okay, But what we can do, we can use De Moivre's theorem to prove these identities by using the binomial expansion. So let's just review the binomial expansion. If we have, for example, and I'll have A plus B to the power, and we're just going to consider now uh, to the power of 3, okay? We know using Pascal's triangle, the coefficients are going to be 1, 3, 3, and 1. So if we expand this out, what we're going to get is A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared and then plus B cubed. If you need to review the binomial expansion, please do. Um, we're going to use it in this in this video. So, for example, now if we had a plus b to the power of four, then we could expand this now and we could write this. Uh, we could do one, four, six, four, and one. There are the coefficients. So we would now get a to the fourth plus four a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared plus 4ab cubed plus b to the fourth. And all we've done is expanded that. We're going to use exactly this idea now to work using sine 3 theta, and we're going to express that as 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. So let's think back to our understanding of De Moivre's theorem. If I now write the following, if I write sine, in fact, let's start the other way. Let's go uh, this way around. Let's write, uh, we'll write cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta is going to be equal now to cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 3. So let's focus on this right now. What we're actually going to do is use the binomial expansion with cosine and i sine theta to the power of 3 to work this out. So there are our coefficients using Pascal's triangle, and we'll expand this out. You can use c for cosine and s for sine. I prefer to still write it out long form. So let's expand this in exactly the way that I expanded the a plus b to the third power right now. So what we're going to have is the following. We're going to have cos cubed theta plus 3 cos squared theta i sine theta plus 3 cos theta i squared sine squared theta plus i cubed sine cubed theta. If you want to hit pause and take a bit of time going through that, feel free to do so. That's what we would get. It's exactly the same as just expanding a plus b to the power of 3. 
What we're now going to do is equate real and imaginary parts with this right here. Okay, so let's just look. We're after sine 3 theta. Let's just look which ones are going to be real and which ones are going to be imaginary from this. This right here is going to be real. Cos cubed theta is real. This is imaginary. So this is going to be plus 3 cos squared theta i sine theta. That is imaginary. Be very careful here. i squared is minus 1. So we end up with minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta, which is real. And this one right here, i cubed, is minus i. So we can write this as minus i sine cubed theta. Remember your powers of i. So i, i squared. So if we do it, we've got i, then we've got i squared is going to be equal to negative 1. i cubed is going to be equal to negative i. And then i to the fourth is going to be equal to 1. Just remember those, um, and it should make sense. So let's look at what we've got in terms of our real and our imaginary parts. So we can say now that part is real. This part right here is real. We can now say that the other two in here are the imaginary parts. And we're simply going to equate the imaginary parts. So what I can say now is the following. I can say sine 3, uh, I sine 3 theta, which is this point right here. So I sine 3 theta is going to be equal to, and we'll write this now as 3i cos squared theta sine theta. And then we're going to have minus i sine cubed theta. So equating these, what we can now write is sine 3 theta is going to be equal to 3 cos squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. All we have to do at this point right now is simply express this all in terms of sine by rewriting this. 3, 1 minus sine squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta will give us now, we're going to have 3 sine theta. So 3 times sine times 1 gives us 3 sine theta. 3 times sine times minus sine squared theta is minus 3 sine cubed theta minus the other sine cubed theta. And as required, 3 sine theta minus 4, 4, I should say 4 sine cubed theta. So as required, that's done. While we're here, we could now look, if we were asked, for example, if that question said, find cosine 3 theta, well, let's just look at the real parts. We could say at this point right now, cosine 3 theta is going to be equal to the real parts. So what we've got then is cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta. And if we were asked to express this all in terms of cosines, we could write this now as cos 3 theta is equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta, 1 minus cos squared theta. And you can see where this is going. We'll get cos 3 theta is equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta and then plus 3 and we're going to have cos cubed theta. So what do we wind up with now? We've got cos 3 theta is going to be equal to 4 cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta. And if you go back to your addition formula in trig and you want to spend a bit of time, that's what you should wind up with. So there we go. Um, that's what we, we end up with. So we can say now that sine 3 theta is 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta, all in terms of sine. We could put this in terms of sine. And even further, if you wanted tan 3 theta, it's sine 3 theta over cosine 3 theta. And then you can do a lot of messing about with that. In fact, we'll look at that now. We would just end up now writing it as, where are we? 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta over 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. And then you can divide out and put it in terms of tan. 
ideally what is better when we have one because uh, um, I've put all of this in terms of cosines it's generally easier if you've got them all in terms of one another but that's certainly feasible so there we go that's expressing now sine 3 theta using De Moivre's theorem we'll go on to look at some even more uh, problematic ones but hopefully that should give you some idea you're simply using the binomial expansion